What's up, gangsters? It is a slow morning out here at Rube Goldberg Enterprises. So I thought I would do a quick, and this one may actually be quick, <laughs> 10 minutes of technique video. And this is one of those where some people are going to go, why would you even bother making a video about this because it's just so obvious. But this is one of those little subtle nuances of craftsmanship and painting in particular that uh, you might not actually pick up on that uh, can make your life easier. You might call it a bench hack. Uh, anyway, have you ever found yourself in the situation where you've got like half a dozen small parts that all need to be painted a different color? And you're like, oh man, I gotta switch the color, I gotta clean the airbrush before every color, I gotta do a field strip, I get you know, blah, blah, blah. And you can just think yourself to death on a little task like that because it just seems like the uh, prep and the cleanup is just so much more labor than the two seconds of actual painting that you have to do. Well, this is one of the things that I love about working with MRP lacquers is that they can help you deal with that much more efficiently. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so here we go, this is the setup. Um, I had uh, just gotten finished uh, spraying these uh, wheels and so I've still got some paint sitting in the cup and this uh, was the perfect time to demonstrate a couple of things that the nature of MRP uh, really makes easy for you. The first thing was that when I shot the initial coat of black on these, I felt like it was a little too dark. I wanted it to be a little bit lighter gray. And uh, so what I did that I often do is I took a bottle of MRP neutral gray and you guys are going to be horrified at how barbaric this seems. I took this pipette that I've obviously been using for other things, jammed it right here into this bottle, took out a couple of drops, put a couple right here in the airbrush cup, blew the rest back in the bottle, and then used the pipette to mix it right there in the cup to get the shade that I want. Now, I understand that that's barbaric for a couple of reasons. One, I'm using this old pipette. I do this a lot, and MRP uh, they make it nice. And, and to be fair, you can do it with acrylics too, because um, with acrylics, they don't reactivate the paint that's already in the pipette, so you can reuse it. And yeah, I know pipettes are cheap, but I like reusing them. It makes me feel a little bit more responsible about the planet and all that shit. But anyway, even with MRP lacquers, it doesn't reactivate them that much when you're, you know, just drawing paint in and out of it real quickly to where you get a bunch of contamination. Um, and I don't find that I get little pieces of, you know, dried paint or whatever in my airbrush cup, because if I did, I wouldn't do this. But at any rate, um, so not only am I reusing the pipette, but I'm mixing in the cup which I know, I mean, if any of you guys have paid attention to the things I say, you know that I'm not a fan of mixing in the cup, but that's thinning in the cup that I'm not a fan of. I always prefer to thin separately so that my ratios stay consistent. Uh, and I really just don't believe that you can do a good job of that when you're doing it in the cup, although a pipette does help. Um, but with Mixing a shade, it's much more of an eyeball type thing. So I don't mind mixing in the cup because basically I'm just kind of working on the fly to get the basic shade that I want. And especially using the pipette, no big deal. I can kind of look at that, shoot a little bit of it. If I don't like it, I can come over here, get a few more drops and keep going. But that is sort of a bonus technique thing because that's not what I'm really on about here. What I am on about is uh, changing colors on the fly. Uh, quickly and efficiently when you've got you know half dozen different parts that need to be a different color and this isn't about cutting corners because I, I am not a corner cutter and I'm not advocating that what I am advocating is doing something that's a little bit more efficient and effective without sacrificing quality that may not have occurred to most of you guys because I know as model makers we're pretty OCD about cleaning our tools whoops nice little splatter there yeah I don't use a cap on my airbrush either um, <laughs> anyway, so the point to this is, now I want to change colors. So, I'm going to take 
this material out of the airbrush. And yeah, I'm putting it right back in this bottle because, look, this is gray, and I don't really have to care about things. You know, I do this with things like grays, olive drabs, browns, stuff like that, where because of my work style, I don't really care so much about them being the exact perfect, you know, correct, specified color. What I'm after is the shade and the look. So, um, and I honestly did not care for this version of neutral gray anyway, and I ended up blending it with some other stuff to put it on the bottom of my B25B. So, now that I've, I've done that, I'm gonna grab just randomly some uh, other colors here so that I can just kind of show you how this goes. And I'm gonna grab some colors that make this a little bit more dramatic, maybe a little more dramatic than I might actually do because this honestly is a technique or a method or whatever you wanna call it that I would do when I'm using similar shades. Uh, again, like greens and grays and browns and stuff like that, where it doesn't really matter. Um, I probably would not do this normally using something like a yellow because that needs to be a little bit more pure. Although, you know, for what I most often use yellow for, which is prop tips, doesn't really doesn't really matter a, a whole lot. Um, anyhow, so here we go. So I'm going to change colors, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my breath. This is bad. I'm going to get high as a kite doing this little demo. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to blow it out, and I could throw a quick rinse of of uh, lacquer thinner in there. But this is not the point of the demonstration. So I'm going to grab another old used pipette, jam it in this bottle of blue. Man, I'm just making a huge mess. I'm like a freaking pig pen this morning. I normally do not work this sloppy, but I'm trying to be quick and efficient. <laughs> in this demonstration of being quick and efficient. Now, look, you're gonna get a little bit of mixing in there uh, because you've got wet, I've got wet gray paint, but look, I'm just gonna purge that out and I've immediately pretty much got blue. And I can go and I can do my work and there's not gonna be a whole lot of contamination going on of that blue. I mean, it's fine, it's not bad, all right? Now, if I don't want to put this blue back in the bottle, then I'll just go to, over to my waste cup and dump it out and I'll blow it out over in the paint booth after I clean up all of the mess I'm making. So I'll just blow that out. Okay, now this will show you for real how much contamination I might get, okay? Because now I've got blue and gray in there and I'm gonna put some yellow in it. And obviously, yellow and blue are gonna make green and that looks pretty nasty. It's not great, obviously, so again, this is probably a bit of an extreme example. Um, but, there we go. You can see it turns yellow pretty quickly. And yeah, it's, it's not right. I mean, again, this is not, this is an extreme demonstration. But, again, for something like prop tips, might not be such a big deal. So the point being is, I can make these switches pretty quickly. And if I'm working between similar colors, and this is especially something that I do with metallics, where I, I really 
you know, like I'm going from dark aluminum to white aluminum to duralumin or something like that, where the shades really are very similar and you're just not going to notice if there's a little bit of, of cross-pollination with your paint. I purposely did this, like I said, as an extreme example so you can see exactly how much you get. Uh, but the point is, I've been able to make those quick color switches and move through all of my half dozen parts that I need to paint each a different color without stopping and doing a uh, even a rinse, much less a uh, strip down or any kind of major cleanup in between colors. And uh, obviously, even with this, you know, extreme of going from blue to yellow, if I had just done a quick rinse with lacquer thinner between those two, that would have been enough to uh, keep that yellow pure. So there you go. Just a quick hack that will help you save some time and energy. Okay, I almost forgot to, to kind of make this last point, and that, that is one of the key things that makes this specifically... Uh, useful with MRP, uh, which you probably picked up on as you were watching, is that you don't have to thin this stuff to work with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically, you could do what I'm doing here with any paint, acrylics, slackers, whatever. But if those are materials that you have to blend with thinners or uh, some kind of flow agent or a retarder or whatever to make them work in your airbrush, obviously this doesn't work. You're not going to just, you know, dip into the bottle and dump into your cup and, and vice versa. But MRP is ready to spray right out of the bottle, and that's one of my favorite things about it. I, I, I see people asking, you know, when, when MRP gets brought up, well, what do I thin it with? How much, you know, do it, what, what ratio do I need to use and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, it's an unfortunate thing that we're kind of programmed to believe that every single paint we buy requires thinning. And that's understandable given the nature of most of the paints out there. But it's just simply not true with MRP. Yeah, you can thin it with Mr. Leveling Thinner or with any, you know, any other lacquer thinner. Um, and there may be situations where you want to. But for normal, everyday paint work, it's great right out of the bottle. Okay, so there you go. Uh, again, that might be elementary or obvious to a lot of people, but if you're not using uh, lacquers or MRP specifically, it may not have ever occurred to you that you can work like that. So hopefully it's a useful sort of technique and uh, it'll help you be a little bit more efficient and effective at your workbench. I hope you liked it. And as always, I definitely appreciate you watching. Much love.